Kia ora e ahoa. Hare mai, come and join me. Now, as we read this story today, New Zealand, Aotearoa, is about to celebrate their first public holiday of Matariki. Do you know what Matariki is, don't you? Matariki is a cluster of stars. This book is a cluster of stories. Matariki around the world. It's written by an astronomer, Rangi Matamua, and Miriama Kamo, who is a famous journalist here in Aotearoa. It's illustrated by Isabel Joy Te Aho White, and the illustrations are beautiful. Because it is a cluster of stories from around the world, it's quite a big book. It has lots of different stories because lots of other countries around the world see the cluster of stars. They just don't call those stars Matariki. They call them by other names. The second half of the book has those stories. Here we go. Matariki in other cultures. In Hawaii, Matariki is known as Makali'i. In Japan, Matariki is called Subaru. Well, the front half of the book is all about Aotearoa, New Zealand. So I thought we could start there. There's a list of contents here. And you can find all the stories. Africa, Greece, Scandinavia, North America, South America. But how about we start with Matariki, the origins. How did Matariki come to be? Are you nice and comfy? Ready for a story? Oh, let's begin. Well, for Māori, Matariki began long ago when the gods ruled the earth. The universe was created between the Sky Father, Ranganui, and the Earth Mother, Papatunuku, who loved each other dearly. They loved each other so much, they hugged all day and all night. <laughs> Lovely, eh? Well, not so much for their kids. The children of the sky and the earth were all Māori atua, gods. Rangi and Papa held each other in such a tight embrace that there was no light between them and no room to move. So Tane Mahuta, god of the forests, decided he'd take action. He put his back to the ground and his feet to the sky. And with his mighty strength, he pushed and pushed his parents apart, creating the world we know today. All of the gods, except for Ta Firimatia, were happy with the separation of Rangi and Papa. Ta Firimatia, god of wind and weather, was close to his father. He wanted his parents to remain together, and it upset him to see his father's grief raining down on his mother. Ta Firimatia wanted Utu revenge for what he thought was a great mistake. So he decided to attack his siblings. He gathered all his stormy fury and wind force and went on a major takedown. One by one, the gods fell to Tafirimatia until it came time to face Tumatauinga, the Māori god of humanity and war. I mean, he is the god of war. Why would you take him on? <sighs> Not surprisingly, Tu Matauinga defeated Tafirimatia. Tafirimatia was devastated. He took out his eyes and crushed them in his hands and threw them into the sky where they stuck to the chest of his father, Ranganui. It was a sign of love to his father and an act of defiance against the other gods. These stars were named Ngā mata o te ariki tā whirimatia, meaning the eyes of the god tā whirimatia. Today, they are known as Matariki. So that's the beginning of Matariki. 
Now, I could go on reading all these stories for you, but you really need to read them yourself. Each of the pages has lots of information. And do you know that each of the stars in the Matariki cluster has its own name? Let me show you. Here we go. These are all the stars and their names. This one here is called Matariki and is like the mum who keeps everyone in order. Urangi is the star of winds, harnessing wind and navigation. Waipunarangi is the star of, can you guess? Rain. Hiwa Iterangi is the star that holds our hopes and our dreams. Waiti is the star of fresh water, rivers, lakes, streams and wetlands. Waita is the star of salt water, our oceans, moana. Pohutakawa is the star that helps to guide our dead across the night sky. Te Puanuku is the star of kai, growing in the ground like kumara, yum. Te Puarangi is the star that exists above the ground, like birds and berries. And something special in the back of the book is this page here, wishing on a Matariki star. Every year on the 31st of December, people all around the world make New Year's resolutions. Usually, these resolutions or wishes are all about ourselves. We say things like, this year, I'm going to smash it at the gym. Or this year, I'll save more money. Or this year, I'll only eat healthy kai. Matariki, the Māori New Year, is also a time for wishes and resolutions. But while we can hope for things that are about us, it's also a neat time to think about others and our natural world. So here's a suggestion. When Matariki rises, let's connect to the different stars and parts of our environment and make a commitment to Matariki. For example, we might look at Waita and say, this year I will go with my Fano to remove plastic waste from the beach. Or we could think about Tipuarangi and decide, this year I'm going to plant four trees, one for each member of my Fano. Planting a small garden at home could be how you make a bond with Tipuanuku, and saving water might be how you honour Waiti. We reckon this is a cool way for all our Fano around Aotearoa and the world to make a big difference to our planet. Imagine how proud and happy Papatuanuku and Ranganui would be. And what a very special world it would be if we all looked after it. Such a cool book, isn't it? Well, if you want to find out more, you can visit Scholastic. Dot co dot nz, and you'll find it in the library. You might even find it in your school library and you'll definitely find it in the shops. It would be a wonderful one to have at home and use every year when we get to see Matariki in June and July. Well, thanks for coming to join me. I'm going to settle down and have another story. <laughs> How about you? What are you going to do? Have a wonderful day, my friend. Kakite.